If you've ever worked with the fluid simulation before, then you'll know that the simulation times can take quite a while, especially as you turn up the number of particles in the sim. And so depending on the situation, you may want to avoid a flip simulation altogether and instead get your water effect by using pyro. So in this quick example, let me show you the basics on how to do that. This in particular will work well for small scale fluid simulations. I wouldn't recommend this for rivers or waterfalls, uh, not primarily for waterfalls anyway, <laughs> uh, but especially for small scale things, this is a great technique. Now, I will say that you, if you've never used Pyro before, you need to check out the basics. And you could check that out at cgforge.com, uh, checking out Pyro 1 and 2. But assuming that you've done a little bit of Pyro before, here's what this technique looks like. Inside the dragon's mouth, you could see that this is where the water is coming from. So I'm using Axiom in this situation, but if you're not using Axiom, it's the same idea. You basically have a sphere, and you use that sphere to create density and velocity shooting out of the dragon's mouth. Over here on this side, we start with the sphere. We randomize density using an attribute randomize. And then we set the velocity explicitly using this point velocity SOP. So if I go ahead and preview these trails, you can kind of see that here we have that direction shooting out. Okay, so as soon as we have that, we then need to think about how to collide against the statue. We don't want the smoke going through the dragon. And so what we could do to set up a, a volume-based collision in this example is to start off by bringing in the fountain. We isolate only the areas that we need. So we have something like this. We then clean up any extra things that we don't need fill any holes that might exist in the mesh, and then we convert this over into a surface VDB. And so if you're not sure what a distance VDB, an SDF volume, a surface VDB, all the same thing, okay? If you're not sure what that is, then check out the Node Bible entry where I talk about SDF volumes. But basically put, that's going to be used for the collision. We need that SDF and we also need to take the normal attributes on this mesh and turn that into a fog volume. So on this VDB from polygons, I'm calling the distance VDB right here collision and then I'm taking the normal attribute and I'm calling that the collision velocity. And so we need those two things to have a proper volume based collision. That gets cached out and everything gets fed down here to the Axiom solver. Now, if you're not sure about all that stuff, what I just mentioned, again, do check out my courses in Pyro because that will clear up a lot of confusion. Uh, but with the solver side of things here, I want to talk about using gravity instead of the buoyancy. Uh, what a lot of people do automatically with Pyro is they throw a bunch of temperature in there. That creates buoyancy. That brings the smoke upwards in the air. And in this situation, we want it to behave like water. So we don't want that. So what I have here in the sourcing is a temperature set to zero, just to be safe. The simulation tab right here, I have no buoyancy happening. I have gravity set to one, which is just a force that's pushing it downwards in the Y direction by about nine and a half units. Sometimes you need to turn that up or down, but that's the gravity right there. And we have a little bit of disturbance and turbulence to break up the shape. So it doesn't look like this uh, mushroom plume as much. Now on the traditional pyro solver, you have the same exact settings. And so we have this buoyancy section right here. Right now that's set to one. You wanna set that to zero, or we can change the ambient and reference temperature so that we only are left with gravity going down. And so if we take, let's say the buoyancy scale down to zero and we go to, let's say a wind right here. We can also just take a wind going down by about 9.8. And so that will again push the smoke down or what will become the water and that causes it to then collide with the bowl and spread out. Okay. 
Now to really make this believable, we also need to change the time scale. And so water moves very quickly with gravity. I found that a time scale of about four to eight usually works pretty well for a water-like speed. And so we're trying to go four times as fast. I then add in an additional four sub-steps to account for that. You want those sub-steps to be able to detect collisions as it goes to simulate there. So four sub-steps along with a time scale of four in this situation. And that's really the main thing. You can also add a bit of viscosity if you want the water to uh, kind of stay more together. And so I do recommend maybe a bit of viscosity to account for that. But the result that we get is pretty cool. So in this example, I have 600 frames and I was able to simulate this in under 10 minutes. So there we go. We have something like this simulates really, really fast, and that's a pretty cool water simulation. So just to show you in context here, there's the dragon and he's spitting out water. Once you have that smoke simulation, what I then do is I convert that over to an SDF again. We then convert that over to polygons, and if you want to do any SDF operations, like smoothing that, or perhaps trying to uh, close open holes, things like that. There's a whole list of different uh, SDF operations you can use right here. And so you could use that if you'd like to. It's up to personal preference. In this case, all I did was convert it back over to polygons. And to get motion blur, we can simply take our velocity field and transfer that information onto the points using an attribute from volume. And so VEL now gets attached to these brand new points based off of the exported velocity field. We then turn that into at V, which is what my render engine wants to see for velocity. Smooth it out a little bit, add some normals, and that's all you really need. Now, the great thing about this approach is a few things. Number one, the simulation went way, way faster than what you would have with Flip. So that's awesome. Another great advantage is that we have access to all the various pyro gas microsolvers. So we have disturbance, we have turbulence, all of these things to add in really cool detail. And because we're just going directly from volume to a meshed fluid, we don't have to worry about having these little bubbly pockets that sometimes happen with particles. Basically, with particles, we have little spheres that get attached to those particles, and sometimes it can make our fluid sims look really bubbly. So, in this case, because we're going directly from volume to mesh, we don't get as much of that effect, which is really, really cool. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one mentorships or consultations, then check out CG Forge Academy. This is a great resource for both beginners and advanced users alike, and it offers you, again, one-on-one -on -one meetings with me to help you pursue your specific goals. Besides that, I want to thank you for watching. I hope that this quick tip can spark some ideas for yourself, some fun experiments to look into. And I also want to give credit to the Sketchfab artist, Huang Hype Vu. Hopefully I said that properly. He made a photo scan of this fountain. So I want to give him credit on that. If you want to download this yourself and play along, it's easy to do so at Sketchfab. So uh, go ahead and check that out. All right. Well, I hope you have a great day and I'll catch you next time.